Hey everyone, welcome to OS. Hey, we are so excited that you guys are here tonight. Tonight we are going to be continuing our series on atypical. Last week, Alex talked about how all atypical families, they can still be used by God. And tonight we're gonna to be talking about how atypical families pray for each other. So. No family is typical, right? We are all atypical. And whoever came up with the standard for being a typical person or typical family, um, I'm sure that their family was just as atypical and weird as most of our family. So don't know where that standard came from, but I do know that we are all atypical. And every family has its issues, its disagreements, its fights. And typical families, how they deal with that is they either like distance themselves, they either you know fight, they argue, they don't talk to each other, and sometimes they even cut off relationships. But atypical families, they pray. And God has called each one of us to be atypical, even an atypical family. And so tonight, I just wanna sit on that and talk about how as an atypical family, we should pray for each other. And that's easier said than done, right? It's way easier said than done because if one of my family members came over and started yelling at me or arguing or said something, my first reaction is not like, you know, I, I appreciate that, let me go pray real quick. It's like, I'm gonna punch you right in your throat. And so it's not easy, but that is what God has called us to do. And, and now I'm not trying to minimize, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to minimize um, if you've been truly hurt uh, by a family member or friend, what I am doing though is I'm, I'm just letting us know what we are all called to do and what we are all called to be. And prayer. Prayer is super powerful and we all need prayer. You and I need prayer. I know that my wife would say yes, Isaiah needs lots and lots of prayer and she, she's right. But yeah, we all need prayer and it's powerful. And it shouldn't be something that we just do when we need something or we're going through something hard. Prayer is a lifestyle. It's talking to God, it's a relationship. If I was only to talk to my wife when I needed something or she, you know, we got in an argument or something like that, that wouldn't be good. I need to communicate with my wife. We need to communicate with God and that's what prayer is. And prayer is important because we can't navigate life on our own. I've tried and it does not work at all. We need to pray to be able to have God help us navigate this thing called life. And we see Jesus live this out as an example, right? Jesus is the best example of this. And he was hated, he was beat by people who just did not like him. And instead of him, you know, bringing down angels and, you know, killing everybody there, he goes, nope, I am going to pray for these people. And so if you have your Bible with me, you're gonna go to Luke chapter 23, verse 33 and 34. And it says this, when they came to a place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross and the criminals were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. So, like I said, these people hated Jesus, right? They beat him, they tortured him, they started to sell his clothes. They did not like Jesus, but instead of God, or Jesus, instead of Jesus doing what he could have done, right? He could have at any moment gotten off of that cross and said, forget this, I'm over this. He prayed for God to forgive those people. And they're all human. Those people there, they were human. You're human, I'm human. We're all going to make mistakes. Your family is going to make mistakes. But we need to pray for each other. See, Jesus was fully human and fully God. So what that means is, yes, he was God, but he felt every single nail that was driven into his hand or his feet. He felt every single you know, lash of the whip. He felt all of that, and yet he still decided to pray for those who needed to be prayed for. So Jesus is the prime example of what it means to be atypical. And it's not easy. Our brains, our human nature, we're wired to be typical. We're wired to want to fit in. We're wired to, to, you know, what we see in this world is what we naturally tend to go towards. And so if somebody comes up to you, if your family member comes up to you and starts something, or there's an argument or disagreement in the world, more than likely you'd be like, okay, perfect. I'm not gonna talk to them, forget them. I'm mad at them. And then you can go years without talking to them. But that's not got what God is calling us to do. God is calling us to pray for those people. So when we get into an argument, instead of blowing up and, and, you know, and going away or, or cutting the relationship off, we need to pray. When somebody in our family is going through something hard, instead of just saying, man, just you know, get over it, you're fine, we need to pray. Our first response should be to pray for those who need it. And 
don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you, know, you need to go to God and pray, hey, I, yeah, please help my sister or my brother or my parents to be fixed. They're crazy, you know, God, please change them. Chances are that's not what God is wanting you to pray. God wants us to pray for those people that he will you know, be revealed to them. And honestly, the better prayer to God would be, hey God, please, you know, if I need to change my perspective, change my you know, thoughts on this, help me to grow, help me to you know, show me where I need to grow or where I need to go and apologize and ask for forgiveness. So it's not easy, but it's what we're called to do. And prayer changes everything. Prayer is so powerful. So if you're sitting there right now and you're thinking, man, like I don't have a good relationship with my sister or my mom or my dad, pray for them. Pray for your guys' relationship. Pray that God reveals something to you, changes your perspective, and just pray that God will, you know, show up and encourage them. Prayer is powerful. So this week, I just want to encourage you, if there's, you know, anybody in your family that you're having a hard time with, or the relationship's not good, or your family, let's be atypical. Let's not be typical, because typical is boring. Typical has lots of pain associated with it, and lots of, you know, things that don't go right, but atypical, that is what God has called us to do, and that is what will give us life. So pray for your family member. Pray for your friend that God will encourage them and mend the relationship. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you just for the opportunity to be here, God. I just pray for each one of these students and leaders that if there's anything going on family-wise, if there's any disagreement or arguments or anything like that, God, I pray that you will help us to have our first response to be, let's pray for those people. Give us the courage to pray instead of react and respond, God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, we love you guys so much. We miss you guys, like I said before, but we cannot wait to see you next week. So make sure you tune in.